Oh, we are so lucky to have James join us now. James, thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having me. I mean, you are undoubtedly the most successful X Factor contestant of all time. OK, over one billion UK streams. But you mm. were writing music way before the X Factor, weren't you? I was, yeah. I was, uh, yeah, I've been doing it a while. About ten years before I did the X Factor, I was in bands and, you know, just plugging away, trying to make it as a singer-songwriter, yeah. How old were you in that video there, then? How many years ago I'd was that? I about 23. So it's nearly... Yeah. It's, ten, it's ten years exactly, I think. Ten nice. years. Yeah. And what does it feel like watching that? Because, I mean, that's... It's, uh, it's, it's a little bit triggering, to be honest. It's, it? it's like, uh, yeah... I mean, that was, that was probably the best and worst experience of my life because it was just an absolute pressure pot. So a lot of anxiety came with, with that whole thing and certainly straight, like... In the, in the immediate aftermath of X Factor, I, I struggle quite a bit. So, yeah, when I see that, I think, what an amazing thing. I got that platform to showcase my, my, my abilities as a, as a musician, and it's allowed me this incredible career. Um, but also, it was, it was, you know, quite a traumatic time as well. It's a really interesting juxtaposition. You've spoken about mm. it before, because it allowed you to live out your dream, as you said. Yeah. And you used it really well. Mm. I mean, 30 million records. A lot yeah. of records, right? Yeah. The downside, though, I guess it's something you have to take when you're thrown into fame like that. How, how bad was it for you? Well, yeah, I just don't think there's, there's a handbook, like, for anyone, you know. Uh, certainly for someone like me, I, 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 you know, was genuinely plucked from obscurity, you know, came from a kind of no normal working-class background. And so anyone who goes through that... Pro a lot of the people you see go on The X Factor, you know, come from nothing and aren't really prepared for, for fame. I, no one's prepared for fame, but I suppose, you know... Um, I, in particular, wasn't really prepared for it. I, I just always saw the goal being a successful singer-songwriter, not, yeah. not to be famous or to be judged on or scrutinised on a, on a sort of, like, such a large scale. So. Was, there, was there a famous moment that mm. freaked you out the most where you went, ah. Oh, there, there, was, there was multiple. I mean, I, Nicole Scherzinger was men mentoring me, you know, from... Nicole from the Pussycat Toss. So I was like, you know, and Robbie Williams was through the door one day, no doubt, Gwen Stefani, just... Like, you know, there was so many, like, icons that were, were in and out of there. It was like a revolving door of, of famous people when I was on The X Factor. So, yeah, it was quite... Um, so you never wild. thought that you'd have the ex explosion of success that, that you've had? I think I always thought I might get somewhere with music because I had, like, a pretty unwavering belief in my ability to write songs and to, like, to move people with, with my singing and stuff. But X Factor wasn't really the path I thought I would take. It would kind of happen by... By, by accident, I sort of ran out of money. My mum bribed me. She, you know, she said, <laughs> I'll give you a tenner if you go and, go and try out the X Factor. So, yeah, it, was, it, it all happened so quick and so suddenly. So, yeah, it's been mad trying to navigate it all. I love the way you've never been a snob about the X Factor. I mean, you're, no, no. you're eternally grateful. Oh, yeah, factor, I'm, I'm right? so grateful, yeah, and to Simon Cowell, who continues to give me opportunities, like having me on Britain's Got Talent and things like that. It's... You know that show. You know, it, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have been able to break through without that because because a lot of, a lot of the time you need money, you need a management company, yeah. and a lot of the people you see in, in music today have got a lot of help behind them. So. And your, your voice is just the perfect kind of love song voice, though, and you do a good broken-hearted, sad love song. Jeff. Yeah, that's yeah, kind I mean, of that's kind of what I've been known for. Yeah. It's, it's, it's How do you feel song. about that being known for that? It's weird actually sometimes because I think like. I always thought of myself as a bit of a, of a, of a rock star because I was in, I was in bands and stuff, and um, yeah, I, I kind of came up doing rock music. So to be known as this like balladeer, and I do so many other styles of music, it's great. You know, any, you know, I love just reaching people and connecting with people, so it's fine. You know? Well, you're going into dance and even country. I've done a bit of dance, yeah. I've yeah. done a bit of dance. Yeah. Uh, do you know who I'd love to see you collab with? Who's that? Fred again. Fred again. That that would be awesome. Wouldn't I, it? I love Fred again. Yeah. So if you're watching Fred, Fred. You know, Give us a call, mate. Yeah, put it out there. Yeah, give us a shout. <laughs> and, and like, country music's really taken off now, isn't it? Yeah, it's massive. Yeah. I know it's always been there, but a lot of younger mm. people getting into it, aren't they? Well, yeah, this new album that I've made is... Uh, it, there's a couple of songs on there that are slightly country-leaning, so, yeah, it's a quite an Americana-inspired record, so, yeah, I'm, uh, there's a bit of that, if you like that. And what inspired Blindside, your, your brand-new single? Well, it was this one was like a, it was a, a different sort of process for me. I kind of I was in the in in the a session. It was a little bit calculated. I was like, I need to write an up tempo song for the record, and um, I just went in the booth and started scatting a load of melodies like over this guitar part. And uh, it was a song that we were ready to actually abandon. We were like, I don't know if we've got anything here, and and I felt like there was something there. And then um, I kind of freestyled most of the song in the in the booth and a lot of the lyrics, and uh, so blindside the phrase kept coming up when I was doing that. And I thought, just, I'm going to write a song about how love can blindside us sometimes. Mm. 
and sometimes it doesn't work out, and then you have to kind of love the ghost of that person. That, uh, you know, and, and then there's new love. Love the child. Congratulations to yourself you. and Jessica. Uh, Emily is how old is she now? She's eight months. She's eight She's months. She's actually nine months next yeah. week, yeah. So. Changes everything, doesn't it? It does. Perspective, yeah. yeah it, it's, it's given me a completely different perspective. I'm a, I'm a, a bit of a softie now. I just, you know, I look at life completely differently. Um, yeah, she's <gasps> she's changed me. Oh, oh look. my word! Yeah. Oh my word! It does it change the way you approach songwriting? Does it change yeah. your 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 tone, your mood when you write songs? I think so. Yeah, I think that um, you know, like when I attempt to tap into that headspace, you know, when I'm, I'm writing about love, uh, she's definitely at the forefront of my mind now. I think about her more than anything mm. else when. When doing that, so yeah, she's become a, a real inspiration for me with my music. Yeah. I'm good on you. Yeah, yeah. You've been very open about your mental health struggles, haven't you? Mm. And how does that incorporate into your music that you do? Well, mu music's always been like a friend to me in, in that sense. You know, it's it's always been there. You know, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, anyone who who, who does art or is, is a creative person like will tell you that uh, it, we're really lucky to have that avenue to channel our our mental health struggles into. So yeah, it, it's. Um, yeah, I do, I do kind of use it. Do you find music a bit of a healer for you? Absolutely, yeah, it's very cathartic. You know, writing songs is... is uh, without that, I'd, uh, you know, I'd probably... Yeah, I don't know where I'd be. It'd be a, I'd be struggling. We're just yeah. delighted to have... My kids are so happy that you're in here oh, today. Really? Yeah, oh, they're absolutely yeah. delighted. They're da saying, Dad, he looks so cool these <laughs> days, the hair and the whole... Yeah, I've business. had a lot of stick about the hair, but... You know, have you? <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. I'd put it under the hat today, and then people can listen to me and not... I, on the hair. Well, now we, all I want to see is what's under the hat. Why is it huge? It, 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 this does contour it a little bit. You know, it, is, it is a bit out of control <laughs> at the minute, yeah. You look, but, um, you look really happy. Yeah, you look man, really I'm, chilled and I'm happy. Just, I'm just relaxed. Any time I've come on here in the past, I've always been, like, riddled with anxiety. Have you? Uh, yeah, uh, just uh, any sort of live TV, probably because of the nature of how I came came up, but, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd sort of probably having a kid just chilled me yeah. out. Yeah, which is yeah. mad. You've got the best fans ever. I mean, you've got mm -hmm. thousands and thousands dedicated to you in a Facebook group. I mean, what yeah. does it feel like to have... And, they, and they're really dedicated to you, aren't they, James? Yeah, my fans are unique, cos I think that they, you know, rightly or wrongly, feel like maybe sometimes I haven't been given a fair shake or I haven't been given my flowers, considering what I've managed to, to do, in spite of, of all the obstacles I've faced. And so they really do campaign for me in a, in a way that is like just it's uh it inspires me and i'm really grateful for them yeah well we're really grateful for you coming in thank you yeah. james thank you blindside hey. out now yeah, thank you out very out. Go on, much go on, go on, my go son milo's going to be looking at your trainers going hello yeah yeah i get a lot nice. of comments about these bad boys they are they, good they, they are nice. they're oh, <laughs> oh no, lovely oh, nice yeah, <laughs> yeah. thank you james <laughs> now